Hey guys, this is Eskimo Poodle, and we're back to let's play Pokemon Leaf Green of the Game Boy Advance. The last time, we defeated Misty at the Cerulean City Gym after we did some trading to evolve our Abra into a Kadabra and then an Alakazam. We also got some version exclusives from Fire Red. Today, we're going to go ahead and leave Cerulean City for Route 5 and make our way over to... What is it? Uh... Not Viridian City. Uh, oh, whatever, whatever the the next area is. But either way, let's start off here on Route Five. There are patches of grass right there. There is one new Pokemon to get. However, there are a couple things down here that we want to check out first. Uh, I don't think there's anything hidden, like item-wise, around here. So whatever. Anyways, if we try to go through here, this will lead us to. I think. I forget where it's going to be related to. It's like Cerulean City or... Or not Cerulean City. Uh, Saffron City, I do believe. But, yeah, that guard is thirsty and he won't let us pass. Because he's stupid like that. So, oh well. In the original game, what you would do is you would reach a certain city and buy either a fresh water, a lemonade, or a soda pop. And you would give it to one of the guards. And that would open up the gates. However, since in this version of the game, you can buy those items on a different game and equip it to a Pokemon and trade it over, they made it a key item instead that you get that will make the guards not be thirsty anymore. But yeah, there's like four of these stations and all the guards are thirsty and they won't let you pass. But then once you give the item to one guard, they will all let you pass. So, yay. Anyways, I got my Nidoran female in our party right now. We're going to go ahead and trade with this little girl right here in this underground passage right here. Or path. Hi, do you have a Nidoran female? Do you want to trade it for my Nidoran male? Yes, I do. Let's go ahead. She will offer to trade for... She will offer to trade the less common version in your game for the more common version in your game. So, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and get ourselves a Nidoran male who has slightly higher attack and I think speed a little bit. Whereas Nidoran female has higher defenses. I was thinking about using this guy. Sage, okay. Oh, Mr. Nido. Okay, cool. That's a nice name for him, I guess. Mr. Nido, Miss Nido. Thanks, you're a pal. But yeah, uh, I was thinking about using this guy on my team, but yeah, I'm already using it on. I'm already using one on Fire Red, so not really any purpose to it. Anyways, shit, he has an item, so let's take it. We got the tiny mushroom, so we can sell that for a small amount of money. And whenever you do an in-game trade with a with a trainer in-game, the Pokemon that you trade will always be the same level as the Pokemon. Or the Pokemon that you get will always be the same level as the Pokemon that you trade away for it. So that's why my Nidoran female was 15, because both of the Nidorans evolve at level 16. And yeah, you could have just canceled the evolution, but I just wanted it like that anyways. Now this, they will, uh, most of them will come with preset natures as far as I'm aware. So this one is a lonely nature, which means its attack will be higher and its defense will be lower. I do believe. Let me check... Uh, yeah, lonely attack, attack higher, defense lower. Later on, there will be a little girl that offers to trade a Nidorene O for your Nidorene A, basically the second form. But that one kind of sucks because, at least for this version, uh, because it'll be a, I think it'll be a bold nature or a brave nature. Either one lo lowers attack. Uh, let's see, yeah, bold nature, it lowers attack. Meanwhile, if if you're playing Fire Red and you trade for the Nidoran female uh, with this little girl right here, that Nidoran female will have the bold nature, which is defense up, attack down. So if you want a attack up Nidoran female in Fire Red, you have to wait for Nidoran A uh, later. Anyways, let's go ahead and use Abra's teleport ability to head back to the last gym center, or or Poke Center that we rested at. Perfect. 
And we'll go, to, go ahead and put Nidoran Mail away. We could level him up like one time and get Nidoran O and then pretty much immediately evolve him into Nido King, his final form. But yeah, I'm not actually going to use him now that I'm thinking about it. So, oh well. The Nidoran family has generally good stats. Nothing, nothing over like, I want to say like 90 or 95. Most of their stats are in the 80 or 70 range. At least in this generation. In later generations, I think their attack or defense gets slightly buffed up, depending on which species it which species it is. But as it is, they're pretty decent early game. But I wouldn't recommend using them for the long term. Anyways, let's go ahead and head down on this route right here. Trainer tips: A Pokemon can be made to hold an item. Some items we even use by the holding Pokemon in battle. Yay, we already know that stuff. No items over here. Okay, so let's go down here and see what we got. Not a whole lot, really. Just a couple patches of grass. And that's pretty much it. Now, there is one new Pokemon to catch in here, if we can find it. It's not you, that's for sure. This route has Pidgey, Bellsprout, and Oddish. Obviously, with the various version exclusives. And then also, one more Pokemon to find. So let's see if we can't get him to show up here. Yeah, our confusion will take out any of these Bell Sprouts in one shot here. Heck, it'll probably take out the Pidgey in one shot too. We don't really get to see a good view of Alexander's mustache here, but eh, oh well. You do what you gotta do, I guess. Bye bye, Bell Sprout. You put up a good fight. Or you would have if you had got a turn. Ooh, look at that beautiful plus three special attack, plus four speed. That is so nice right there. And we learned Disable. Uh, the way Disable works is it'll disable the move that the opponent last used. So you don't ever want to use it on the first turn if you have a fast Pokemon like Alakazam. You want to use it on the second turn. And then it'll disable whatever their last move used was for... I think two to five turns or something like that. Anyways, here is the third Pokemon available, Meowth. He is a fast normal type with pretty average stats all around. And, well, he's fast. He can learn a decent amount of TMs and we didn't kill him in one attack, so that was nice. But I really don't think he's all that good. His attacking stats aren't great. His defensive stats aren't great. He's just painfully average as far as I'm concerned. So, sorry Meowth, you're there, I'm never going to use you. Right, and we got him, there we go. I do believe he was Pokemon Blue exclusive in the original games. Adores round objects that wanders the streets on a nightly basis to look for drop loose change. He does have a cool move called Payday that will give you twice his level in coins after battles. Yeah, let me see if this guy was actually... I'm pretty sure he was version exclusive back in the day. Let me see if I can't check that out real fast because I'm pretty sure he was. He was... Okay, so yeah, he was... He was blue exclusive back in the day. Uh, if you had the Japanese versions, he would have been he would he would have been green exclusive. But yeah, red and yellow for Generation One, you could not capture him. You had to trade him over from blue or green if you were in Japan. But there we go. We got Meowth right here up there, and we got a nice little lonely house down here. This little house is reasonably decent for some stuff. I run the daycare service. Would you like me to raise one of your Pokemon? Uh, no, I'm good, thanks. Come again. So the way this guy works is you drop off one of your Pokemon with him, and then for every step that you take, they gain one point of experience. And they can level up and all that other good stuff. They can't evolve, but they can learn new moves. You want to be careful with that because sometimes they'll override a move that you don't want them to overwrite. But yeah, every every step they gain, it becomes one point of experience. They can level up. And when you want to pick them up from the daycare or the 
Is this daycare? Yeah, daycare. When you want to pick them, when you want to pick them up from the daycare, it costs 100 Poke Dollars plus $100 per level that they gained. So if you put a level 5 right at hand there, and you come back and he is level 15, it'll cost you 1100 Poke Dollars to get out. 1000 for the 10 levels, and 100 for the deposit fee. Actually, dropping him off doesn't, doesn't cost any money, it's just getting, getting him back out does. So that's something really useful for like a Magikarp that is just going to take forever to evolve with the switch out and back in method. So that's not a bad idea. Or if you don't feel like using your Thief TM on your Abra, or any TMs on your Abra until it evolves, then yeah, drop him off there or something like that. But really, it's it's a convenience, but nothing terribly great. Anyways, let's go ahead and head into the underground path that will lead from Cerulean City to Vermilion City. And we can run around down here because it is a lawless zone of stuff. There is items hidden on the ground around here, but I'm not sure where they are. I think it's mostly just like status healing items though, like Paralyze Heal, Burn Heal. I think there might be a potion around here. Some of the later games, they might give them like better items to heal, but really there's barely anything worthwhile, so you know what, screw it. I'm not gonna bother. And if we find anything down here, awesome. If we don't, which more than likely is the case. Later on, you'll get an item that'll let you find hidden items on the ground, and that'll make your life easier to find stuff, but as it is right now, I'm not terribly worried about it. People often lose things in the darkness of the underground path. Yeah, they do, but yeah, good luck finding them. Alright, we're here on Route 6. Let's see here. Uh... Let me make sure I got my right stuff here. I'm trying to see if there's anything new on here worthwhile catching. I don't think there is actually. Nope, this just has the same Pokemon as Route 5 with slightly higher levels. Well, actually, I think it does have some other stuff to get, but we can't get it right now. And a rare candy, very nice. And a citrus berry, which I do believe recovers 30 HP if your Pokemon gets to a yellow or red state. Yeah, 30 HP. So that's actually reasonably decent, and a lot of trainers will have that on there. Maybe not a lot, but a decent amount will. So, it's there. Alright, so yeah, we just have the Oddish, Bellsprout, Pidgey, and Meowth family on this route. Nothing really terribly great to worry about. We do have some trainers though, so let's go ahead and fight these guys. There aren't many bugs out here. Yeah, probably not. Uh, as a reminder, psychic types are weak to bug types, but I don't think this guy's going to have anything with any bug moves since the only bug move that we'd be really worried about is like Twin Needle or Pin Missile, and those are learned by Beedrill at later levels, so... Yeah, I don't think we have anything to worry about, really. And bug types don't resist Psychic. They just happen to be strong against them. Or, their moves just happen to be strong against them. So we can just go ahead and use Alexam to confusion these guys to death. Not that we're going to get much in the way of experience out of these bugs, but it's there. And there we go. Nice, easy bug catcher. Goodbye. And yeah, Alexam here is already catching up in the levels. It barely took anything at all, and he's already probably our strongest team member at the moment. I like it. Okay, and then we got these two lovebirds over here arguing. You don't actually have to fight them if you don't want to. You can just completely ignore them, but there's no fun in that. Who's there? Quit listening on us. I'm not listening in on you dudes. I'm just trying to talk to you about, well, dying. And you sent out a Squirtle. Very nice. Nice high level Squirtle, too. 
uh, which means he's probably going to have Bite. So we're going to watch out for that. Bite is a dark type move that will do damage to us. He's not going to actually use it. That makes my life easy. Goodbye. That reminds me, I want to teach a move to Squirtle here. Alright. Simon, Simon grew to level 19. Nice extra special attack and speed. It's beautiful. I love it. Yeah, you just can't win, kid. Okay, I actually do want to teach that Water Pulse TM over to Tipped Up there. Because he's not going to learn too many more offensive water type moves for a while. Matter of fact, I think his next one is at like level 40 or something. And his Hydro Pump, which is extra powerful, but not great on the accuracy. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of Bubble for, hyd for, for Water Pulse here. And there we go. Now he has a nice 60 power water move to crush the competition with. So it makes everybody happy. Let's go ahead and switch out. Well, Rocky, you're going to get plenty of experience in the gym. So let's put Pecker out there. Excuse me, this is a private conversation. Yeah, 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 I don't care. Matter of fact, I think this chick has a Pikachu. I'm not sure, but I think she does. And I'm pretty sure this guy's just going to bother with his quick attacks. Yeah, Rattatas, they just love their quick attacks. They will do their best to use it at least once a battle. I mean, you'd think that they would use it more often since they would probably, you know, just die to anything that's anything, really. But they don't feel the urge to. Hi, Pikachu. You're not going to stand a chance because you are a electric type and you're not doing any damage to me. And my magnitude is more than enough to say, you say, go bye bye. Yeah, even a even a reasonably weak magnitude like five is more than enough to take out a, an electric type like that. So it's great. Ugh, I hate losing. That's fine. Everybody hates losing, but some people just get used to it more often than others. Sorry. And another bug catcher over here. Awesome. I've never seen you around. Are you good? Yeah, yeah, good for nothing. <laughs> oh, you got a Butterfree. Not that that's actually going to do anything for you, but go for it. Uh, Butterfree does have some, yeah, like status moves like Sleep Powder, and I think she gets like Stun Spore. And also he gets a couple of Psychic type moves like Confusion and some other such stuff like that. But really, not terribly dangerous. Okay, you're just going for all the status stuff, huh? Fair enough. I don't remember. I don't remember this Butterfree being this much of a pain in the butt. But whatever. The problem with people, the problem with Pokemon that have status moves is they like to just spam the same status moves, even if it, you're already inflicted with those statuses. Like you see, Butterfree is just supersonicing. He's not using confusion or anything else like that to actually attack. He's just he's just pestering us, really. You rat bastard! Very well. Go for it, Rocky. Pecker, you tried, but this bug is being a stupid idiot. So whatever. Okay, Stun Spore, that's fine. We only have a chance to not attack, but that is Parafusion, where you're paralyzed and confused, so you have a chance to attack yourself, and you also have a chance to just not be able to move or do anything. So, it really sucks. Whereas with, like, sleeping, you're just put to sleep automatically. Come on, we're off Confusion. There you go. Finally. Jeez, that was irritating. But we both get a level out of it, so very nice. Pursuit. That is a dark type move that deals more damage if the Pokemon that it's being used against tries to tries to switch out. 
So it's really nice like that. Let's go ahead and get rid of Growl, I guess. Granted, Pidgey does, or Spearow does not have the highest special attack to use it, but well, it works out reasonably decent. Alright, Elijah, you put up a good fight. You're too good. Yeah, you're good too, kid. Uh, I'll, I'll admit that your Butterfree was a pain in the ass. Because now I actually have to use status recovery stuff on my my fellows over here. Thanks, guy. I appreciate that. Uh, do I have an awakening? Okay, I do. Luckily, luckily with like stuff like confusion, it doesn't persist outside of battle, so you don't got to worry about using any items to cure that kind of stuff. Okay, and you didn't actually take any damage there. Let's go ahead and switch out Bananas, since he is starting to fall behind on the levels there. And let's take on these guys. Fuck it, fuck off, Hiccups. By the way, with this patch of water right here, eventually you'll be able to find Pokemon on there too. But that requires either a HM move called Surf, which lets you surf on the water, or a Fishing Rod, uh, one of three. Yeah, we're not going to get those for. We're going to get the we're going to get the Fishing Rod, the weak one, like right away here. But the other ones will have more variety. Me? Well, okay, I'll play. Okay, at least you're not accusing me of, like, touching you or anything like that. Like those idiot lasses over on... Over by Brock's village. Alright, Isabel, you're gonna send out a whole bunch of weak stuff. Fair enough. Uh, let's hope that Karate Chop is enough to kill you. Yeah, it's close enough. And you're gonna sand attack like the fucker that you are. Why? You could use, like, Gust and actually do damage, but... I guess quick attack works too. Goodbye. Pidgey again. We're gonna keep going here. Hopefully he doesn't. You're just gonna keep sand attacking, aren't you? You fuck. Okay, you have gust. Use that on me. It's effective. There you go. I knew you could do it. And there you go. Bye bye, Mankey. As you can see, Sand Attack, Royal Pin in the ass. But, eh, what are you going to do about it? Uh, Tip Tup, you're going to go out there. Eventually, you're going to get that damn Bite Attack, and that'll be really nice, just for general purposes. But Water Pulse, that'll do plenty of damage right there. I was hoping for a little more, but whatever. Uh, it's just Water Gun. And goodbye. We could revive Minky for... Getting more experience, but eh, whatever. There's a Poke Center, like, not terribly far away, so it's not really pertinent. Bye bye, Pidgey. Your sand attacks. If it wasn't for your sand attacks, I probably would have had much better luck with Minky actually killing you, but whatever. Eh, more defensive stuff, but you know what, I'll take it. And we're trying to learn Bite, so let's go ahead and learn that, since that'll be very helpful for just in general. Uh, let's get rid of... I'm never going to use Withdraw, like... Like, yeah, it has uses, but I never actually bother using the damn stuff. I, I'm more of an offensive type of fighter. I'm not really big on the whole status effects or whatnot. I tend to just go for the pure damage type stuff. Things just didn't work. Okay, uh, let's see... Hey, might, as well, might as well keep tipped up out there. Huh? You want to talk to me? Not really, but if you insist. And Jeff wants to battle. Spiro, how you doing, bud? You know what? I'm tired of you. I'm going to bite you to death. Uh, your Fury attack's not going to do that much damage, just for the fact that young tipped up has plenty of defense there, so... Good shot. Uh, Bite does have a chance to make the opponent flinch if if it goes first. Oh, it's a speed tie. Nice. 
It's not guaranteed, but it's like a 30% chance or 20% chance or something like that. You're about to use Raticate. No, let's keep him out. Let's keep him out. Uh, Raticate is the evolved form of Ratata. Usually you gotta wait till level 20 to evolve him, but I guess this guy found a uh, wild Raticate that is a lower level than what its normal evolution is. So, fair enough. You're gonna tail up and then you're gonna use that Super Fang or Hyper Fang or whatever it is on me, aren't you? Probably. And that's actually a reasonably decent combo since it's a powerful move. No, he's not gonna use it? Okay, cool. Feel free to actually confuse their water pulse. No? Fine. Hyper Fang? Yeah, okay, there goes there goes tipped up. Yeah, Hyper Fang is just nice and powerful. That's the main thing he's got going for it. Uh go for a Simon. By the way, with disable, when it disables the last move that a Pokemon used, I think you have to be I think the Pokemon used to disable actually has to be in battle for it to actually work. Like I can't have switched out Alexam there and then used disable. I don't think it would work like that. But again, I never actually used a damn move, so I'm not entirely sure. This stinks. I could have beat your challenge. Well your your lower defense and hyperfang strategy actually worked out pretty good, I'm not gonna lie. It was reasonably decent. Okay, and we're gonna go heal up here, and we're not gonna explore the whole town here just yet, but we are gonna do a couple things. First off, we wanna head towards over here, and talk to this guy. I'm the fishing guru. I simply love fishing. I can't bear to go without. Tell me, do you like to fish? Uh, kinda. Grand. I like your style. I think we can be friends. Take this and fish, young friend. And we get an old rod from the fishing guru. Fishing is a way of life. It's like the finest poetry. From the seas to rivers, go out and land the big one, my friend. Okay, so we got the fishing rod, which if we use near a source of water, then we can go ahead and get Pokemon out of it. So let's go ahead and do that. You wait for the... There you go. Just wait for it to stay on the hook. And there you go. I think in previous generations it also made you wait for like an exclamation point, but I guess they got rid of that. So the old rod has the unfortunate property of only ever catching magic harps. They may vary in level, but it's always only gonna be the magic harp. Like I think it'll vary from like level five to like fifteen or something like that. So don't don't waste the five hundred Poke dollars on the one over at Mount Moon, unless you really want it before the Misty fight. And even then, you can just come down here anyways. It's not that big of a deal. In the distant past, it was somewhat stronger than the horribly weak descendants that is, exist today. So yeah, Magikarp, he starts off with Splash. And then his next move that he learns is Tackle at level 15. And... Then he doesn't learn anything else until you evolve him at level 20. Yeah, but when he evolves at level 20, he becomes extra awesome. So... Well, at least physically. His special attack got kind of hosed in the split in Generation 2. But whatever. You see the SES and more to the harbor? Kinda. We're careful about pollution here. We've heard Grimer multiplies a toxic sludge. Okay, anyways, there's one more thing here in the Poke Center that I want to grab. Where is it? My Pokemon was poisoned. It fainted while we were walking. The urge to battle with somebody you've tangled with before. Have you ever had that urge? I'm sure you have. I wanted to battle certain people again over and over too. So I've been giving these away. Please, take one. And we get the Versus Seeker, one of my favorite items in the game. Use that device and you'll find trainers looking for a rematch. you have to charge this battery to use it though. Nice. So yeah, with the Versus Seeker, what it does is you use it and trainers that you have previously battled they will possibly want to rebattle you again, and sometimes they're stronger with higher level Pokemon and higher money rewards. Sometimes they're the same level, but it's just really nice because it gives a repeatable source of experience and money at the same time. It, when it's, when you set the battery needs to be charged, what happens is when you, when you use it, 
the battery depletes and then you have to walk for 100 steps before you can use it again which really is not that long i mean heck you could walk around 100 steps pretty much like well, like this pretty much and after after just a couple rounds of just walking back and forth your batteries recharge and you can rebattle people so it's really nice Even if they are the same level, Pokemon could, very, could have very different stats and abilities. Pokemon raised by a trainer are stronger than one in the wild. Yes, they are. We'll go over that later because it's not really terribly important for the moment. Important for the moment. Is it is true that a higher level Pokemon will be more powerful, but all Pokemon will have weak points against specific types. So there appears to be no universally strong Pokemon. That's true, but there are Pokemon that are ridiculously strong. So it's also kind of not true. Okay, so we made it to Vermil Ver Vermilion City. Next episode, we're going to go ahead and explore the place and see what else we can get out of here. So, guys, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Have a good night.